Hi, my name is Dan Doherty. I'm a professor in the physics department at North Carolina State University, and I'm working on a mini course that I call the Zoology of Excitons. So this is the introduction to the mini course, a short video where I just talk about what the goal is. And we'll put, I think, most of the mini course materials on my YouTube channel. So to start out, I want to say what an exciton is. Excitons are really important in any optoelectronic technology. And what it is, is it's a bound electron hole pair that is usually created by light absorption. So if you shine light on a material, you make excited states in the material. Uh, so you basically take an electron from the ground state, move it to the excited state. You leave a hole behind in the ground state where the electron used to be. And then these two charged, uh, charged objects have a Coulomb interaction with one another. Um, and we typically talk about them together as an exciton. And so the properties of excitons often are important in determining the properties and performance of materials in solar cells, light emitting diodes like in displays, lasers, photoconductors. So here's an example of uh, the newest high-end model of the Nintendo Switch gaming console, which uses an organic light emitting diode screen to have a really nice high performance display. And the interesting point about the materials that are used to uh, you know, make the colors in that display is that they're organic semiconductors and they have uh, binding energies that hold the electron and hole together within an exciton that are very large. And so one of the topics in this course is sort of just how to categorize different types of excitons in different types of materials. So within the course, we will describe the different types of excitons. Uh, we'll describe and evaluate the various models of exciton behavior. And we'll do some simple calculations of exciton properties using the models. So all that is sort of, I would say, relatively standard solid state condensed matter physics learning objectives. Um, why do I say that this mini course is focused on zoology? Uh, and I want to go back to this quote from supposedly from Ernest Rutherford that all science is either physics or stamp collecting. Uh, and I want to repudiate this quote. And so the title of my mini course involving zoology is meant to be an explicit repudiation of this idea that somehow physics is deep and important and stamp collecting is superficial and boring. Uh, I think the opposite is true. I think this is a really a sort of toxic and um, oblivious quote when you think about what science is really all about. The truth is um, the stamp collecting aspect of science is absolutely fundamental. If you don't know what types of things are out there in nature, you have no basis to think deeply or uh, in a more sophisticated way building models, right? So you have to do zoology, you have to do stamp collecting to do anything like science. And so I really dislike this quote. It's not actually clear to me that Ernest Rutherford ever said this. I tried to do a little bit of research to see if he actually said it. Uh, and it's, again, not not perfectly clear, but okay, it's, it's often attributed to him and often um, used by toxic physicists to assert their supremacy. All science is stamp collecting. Everything else you do after the stamp collecting is just organization of your stamps. And that's important, right? That's actually how we make sense of the world around us. But if you don't do the stamp collecting, you got nothing. And so that's an important perspective that I want to take within this mini course, which is we need to do the zoology of excitons. We need to know what types of excitons are out there in nature. Um, as a prerequisite to any more sophisticated discussion, calculation, application. So next time we'll start up on some basic textbook physics of excitons.